When working with acrylic sheet, one of the things that we often need to do is stick it together. And while some glues work on acrylic, solvent bonding with commercial acrylic cement is preferable, but not necessarily available or affordable. The internet says a lot about acrylic bonding alternatives, for example, acetone and other homemade concoctions. But there's no real definitive answer about what works, what doesn't, what's better, and what's worse. So let's take a closer look at how to bond acrylic sheet without acrylic cement. This is Cosador Jonathan here. Bonding acrylic to acrylic or solvent welding acrylic is a process where acrylic is chemically melted together. And a lot of things are said about solvent welding chemical alternatives and how to make them. But what I've done is pick a heap of chemicals off of the shelf at the hardware store and I'm going to test them in comparison to a well-known commercial acrylic cement, our control. I'll call this well-known bonding agent number three. I found number three to be expensive and ridiculously hard to get in Australia. Number three bonds quick and has a very strong bond. Before we get started, a lot of these chemicals are dangerous, so please look up the MSDS for your own safety. Now, the chemicals that we're going to test. First up, xylene. Xylene is used for thinning paints and varnishes. It can be used in place of toluene because of the similar chemical structure. And toluene is known to be a good solvent for acrylic. Methyl ethyl ketone or MEC. Off the shelf, this stuff is PVC priming fluid. It's used by plumbers to clean and prime PVC before gluing. And it's well known to model builders for solvent welding styrene and similar plastics. Lacquer thinner. Lacquer thinner is very similar to xylene and it's used for similar purposes. This product contains toluene and MEC as its largest components. Acetone. Now there's a lot of controversy on this one. Many say it's the way to solvent weld and there are others that say that it just stresses the acrylic. And lastly, paint stripper. This seems like a strange one, but it's been picked because it contains dichloromethane which is the solvent that is used in many commercial solvent welding products. The two main attributes of a good acrylic solvent weld are clarity and strength. So I'll build a rig to test the strength of the bond and I'll bond some pieces together to test for clarity and visual defects. So I best jump on the computer and design some parts. I'll cut off a piece by hand to fit the laser cutter. Laser cutters are great for repeat parts, but if you don't have one and you'd like to know how to cut acrylic by hand, please check out my other videos. I'll leave a card on this video and a link in the description. And even though I'm using laser, laser cutting isn't the only way, and it's not necessarily better but it's quick and it repeats almost exact cuts, which is perfect for a testing situation. Now all the cuts are made, I'm going to stick them all together. Acrylic cements are usually dispensed from an applicator bottle with a syringe nozzle, and to get these by themselves can be expensive and not really viable for testing purposes. So I'll be using some one milliliter medical syringes and 25 gauge needles. I got these for next to nothing because they were out of date. So let's get started. I'll peg it together. I'll apply the solvent and I'll do this for each of the chemicals. And once they're all done, I need to let them cure for 24 hours. Okay, it's been a little over 24 hours and all these parts are ready for testing and inspection. First, I'll be doing the strength test. For this test, I've designed two pieces, one that will be screwed to the bench and one that will be pulled on by a hook. They have been designed to be joined face to face to avoid edge cut imperfections with a joining edge of five millimeters by 40 millimeters with a distance to the force applied by the hook of 50 millimeters. I get a piece of ply and clamp it down to the work surface and screw the test pieces to it. And I have made a luggage scale camera rig so we can see the force required to break the bonded pieces. None of these solvent bonds have had time to reach full cure, but they will show enough evidence for testing purposes. First up, the control, number three, breaking at 5.74 kilos. 
calculated that's 56.25 newtons. Unfortunately, the xylene broke while setting up for the test, and due to the weak forces exerted, I'll award it a nil score. The methyl ethyl ketone, or MEC, breaking at 3.74 kilos, calculated that's 36.65 newtons. The lacquer thinner, breaking at 0.49 kilos, calculated that's 4.8 newtons. The acetone, breaking at 3.14 kilos, calculated that's 30.77 newtons. And the paint stripper, breaking at 3.29 kilos, calculated that's 32.24 newtons. That means structurally that the control did the best, followed by the mech, then the paint stripper, then the acetone, with the others that are chemically similar falling to the bottom of the list. On to the clarity tests. With the control, apart from visible workshop dust, it is completely transparent and where number three is present, it appears as if the two pieces were one. With the xylene, it was transparent where it could weld the piece. However, much of the xylene appears to have evaporated through the edge of the joint. It's left some big fractures in the acrylic and has cracked some of the edges that were previously stressed by the laser. With the methyl ethyl ketone, it's clear and appears to have left accentuated fractures where it had been stressed by the laser. However, there are no internal cracks. The result of the lacquer thinner is unfortunately much the same as the xylene, with high evaporation and deep fractures. The acetone, it was transparent where it could weld the piece. However, it's left some big fractures in the acrylic. And finally, the paint stripper. Some of the paint stripper is clear, but what I suspect to be the cellulose thickener has left a white residue. However, the paint stripper seemed to melt the acrylic the best without stressing it. Apart from the control, the methyl ethyl ketone seemed to do the best. So I'll sand and polish one of the edges and have a side-by-side -side comparison with the control. The edge of the joint sands and polishes up quite well. And looking at them, apart from a few minor fractures on the methyl ethyl ketone, they can barely be told apart. Now, I'm not saying that MEC or methyl ethyl ketone is a replacement for proper acrylic cement, but for a potentially lower cost bonding agent that does not need to be perfect, it can do the job. With those tests, I got some results that kind of surprised me and made me realize that there's more that I want to look into and maybe I need to make a part two. And if you found this interesting too, please like, subscribe and turn on notifications. And if you would like me to make something else, please drop a comment below. And remember guys, break it till you make it and I'll see you next time.